One of the subplots of the 2023 Grand Final was the absence from the 23 of Taylor Adams. He'd been a warrior since joining from GWS in 2013, playing 185 games for Collingwood, including a near best on ground performance in the 2018 Grand Final. But he couldn't play his 186th in the same game five years later. He hurt his hamstring in the bye week leading to the prelim final and then on the 15th of September he suffered another low grade hamstring that ruled him out of the grand final. The vice captain joined an unlucky group of players that have missed out on premiership success due to injury or non-selection. Nothing can show the highs and lows of sport and Adam's reaction after the siren. It's the ultimate bittersweet moment. But Adams wasn't alone. There were two other teammates who had contributed heavily throughout the season. John Noble was stolen out of South Australia in the 2019 mid-season draft and was a mainstay running defender from his second season onwards, with his meteoric rise continuing under Craig McRae. In fact, he was coming up just as clutch as any other Collingwood player, especially in the 2023 season. The 26-year-old became a fan favourite who epitomised the speed and creativity the Pies play with. He played every single home and away season game and put up career high numbers. Round 24 against Essendon was his 83rd game in a row and would be his last for the year. It was a shock and upset his biggest fans. Oleg Markov, who walked on at the start of the year, was favoured as both played the same role. Vision clearly shows how upset he was and it's hard to blame him. There wasn't much more he could have done. The other player was Dan McStay. He's not as loved by the Collingwood faithful as the other two, and McStay was hurt through the middle of the season but was a best 22 player. He did kick four goals in the qualifying and prelim finals, but the knee injury suffered in the penultimate match ruled him out. Injuries in such high impact and collision sports is a deciding factor for the team that comes out on top. It can galvanise the club or wear on its performance. When Bob Murphy tore his ACL in round three, it seemed all hope of an exciting team were instantly dashed. It's hard to overcome not having your captain on the field, especially with a team full of under 25 year olds. Individually, Murphy was running out of time to win a premiership, so all he could do was watch in extreme joy and shock as the Dogs climbed each final to play Sydney. Like Adams, the feelings would have been mixed, but Murphy's ending was the best and definitely the most dramatic out of all these stories, as he was called on stage to be fully acknowledged. No doubt this played a part in Murphy keeping some peace with the moment and just enjoying being on the field with his teammates after such a grand success. Do you feel part of it? Do you think that you're part of the Premiership team? I know you weren't in the 22, but do you see yourself as being part of that Premiership team? Well, a part of the club, yeah. yeah I'm not insecure about my role for the team and for the club at that at that time so the people say you know people say i was mixed emotions Mm. but so the the only way i can describe that was as a as a fan of the bulldogs it was euphoria yeah because we are we're fans we're supporters we're barrackers as a leader of the club i was proud like it was a pride that i'd never felt before but as a footballer i was utterly heartbroken in some strange way his season ending injury which left him completely powerless on the field and sitting in the box, might have been an inspirational element throughout the season. Unconsciously, it may have lifted the players, and the same can be said for Collingwood this year with Adams, Noble and McStay. Two other stories don't have such happy endings and show a harsher reality of not being a part of the day, as the player Tony Modra was the most talented to miss out. He played his first game at 23, but within two seasons was one of the most influential footballers South Australia has ever seen. It wasn't just the high marking and highlights, but his production. Coming into the 1997 season, he was in the heart of his prime. He kicked 87 goals and was all Australian, but like Adams and McStay, injury struck. In the prelim final against the Bulldogs, he tore the last quarter of his ACL, which he revealed in an open mic, and missed the next week. Others, including Adelaide hero Mark Rusciuto, joined him on the sidelines. The Crows were a strong team, and that three or four that missed wanted to get back the next year. All of them did, except for Modra. 
He returned in round 10 the following year, but his form was patchy at best, although he did kick 12 goals between round 20 to 22. The qualifying final loss would be his last game. He kicked a single goal and Malcolm Blight dropped him for the rest of the finals. It was a major story. Modder explained the day to Mike Sheehan. I had in 97, like the only thing I missed out on there was pretty much a medal. I was there for every other occasion, yep. I didn't play on the ground that day, so I was very lucky to be part of that. So, with 98 and everything that happened, and, and just having to sit down home down at Victor Harbour and watch, watch how the way the whole game panned out, and not getting an invite to go go to the game or anything like you that. You didn't get invited of, to go to the game? Yeah, well, they, I think they were, they were just wanting to know numbers and things like that and <laughs> pay your own way or whatever, but anyway, I was, yeah, I was sort of feeling a bit down at the dumps at the time, yeah. so yeah. And like Adams, the event led to him departing as he finished his career at Fremantle, unable to reach another grand final. The most tragic tale is Derek Kickets. The star Western Australian played 45 games in 1992 and 1993, kicking 61 goals. It was all about impact for Kickett, and he was never a big accumulator, but when the goals dried up in the 93 finals, he was suddenly out for the grand final. In the three previous games, he totaled just 15 disposals and a goal. It clearly blindsided Kickett and he completely ghosted the club and turned a despised Sheedy. On an appearance on the front bar, Kickett revealed he believed Sheedy had a personal vendetta against him and that the pair had a few words with each other in the three or four weeks before the grand final. Kickett left the Bombers immediately and didn't speak with his former coach for 25 years until they met up in 2018 in an event organised by Essendon CEO Xavier Campbell. Not being selected on the day while being such a pivotal member in the lead up cut deep, ruining friendships and relationships. Other recent examples include Nick Nananui who missed West Coast flag in 2018 and Jack Graham who became a great role player for the Tigers in 2019. If these stories of pure bad luck continue, it may shift the AFL to give out more medals to players and staff. We see it in the NBA and NFL, where bench and reserve players still get the material appreciation for their part in the team. Maybe it's the right thing to do. Did Adams deserve a medal? He was a heart and soul player, just like Bob Murphy. It can make players who miss out on the day feel more included and have something to recognise them and not just words. Discussions around games needed to play to get medals, whether assistants should get them, and other points can be figured out later. The AFL has been challenging traditions and looking to expand concepts recently, and this may be one of the next ones. Noble and McStay will look to return to the day next year, and Adams will hope to be a premiership player, but this time for the Swans.